Hello, today I'd like to talk about the difference between our KDZ Bruxer, which has been our flagship product, and our KDZ Aesthetic. Now the difference is the KDZ Bruxer has a higher flexural strength. So with the KDZ Bruxer, we have a flexural strength of about 1500 megapascals. And flexural strength is how they measure ceramic materials. What they do is they take a bar of ceramic, they put it on two little sawhorses, they apply a force until it breaks, that's the flexural strength. So theoretically, the higher the flexural strength, the more durable the ceramic. Because certainly marginal ridges, central fossa, cusp tips, any ceramic hanging off the prep, that's undergoing stress similar to what we'd see with the flexural strength tests. Now the disadvantage of the Bruxer is it's opaque. So aesthetics are compromised slightly, certainly better than a porcelain fusion metal crown or a gold crown, but it is a little bit more opaque. So we introduced the KDZ Bruxer aesthetic. This material is highly translucent. In fact, it fits into a category called zirconium dioxide HT, or high translucent zirconia. There's several different brands on the market. We actually extensively tested these materials, and with blind, under blind studies, we picked the material we thought was the most aesthetic. In fact, all the evaluators, and I was in that evaluation, picked the same material, and that's the material that we use for our Bruxer aesthetic. Now, the advantage of the Bruxer aesthetic, it is not opaque. In fact, it's translucent. And it rivals most of the other all ceramic systems out there, including Emacs, which is one of our most popular. The disadvantage, I'm not going to say hugely disadvantage, but the flexural strength is about 650 megapascals, or about half of what we see with our traditional KDZ Bruxer. Still, this is six times stronger than a porcelain on a PFM, and it's a time and a half stronger than we see with lithium disilica being Emac. So it's certainly not a weak material, it's just not as durable as our traditional Bruxer. So when do I use what? Second molars, or on patients I call destroyers where they break everything because they're not gonna break a material that has a flexural strength of 1500 megapascals and we will use the same material as a core or a coping for multi-unit bridges. We can always layer ceramic on top of that, it's what we call the KDZ Ultra, but this is what we use as our framework because of the strength. Where I use my Bruxer Aesthetic is anywhere that I would normally use the lithium disilicate, where I want high aesthetics, anterior, single crowns. We typically would not use it for veneers, we would stick to a more bondable ceramic like lithium disilicate or empress. We will use this for crowns on premolars, again part of the aesthetic zone, or even crowns on molars. I do a lot of my molars in Bruxer aesthetic because I think it's more aesthetic than the traditional Bruxer because of the translucency. I also can use the Bruxer aesthetic for three unit bridges. Anterior bridges, let's say I'm replacing a central, or premolar replacement. So let's say I was missing my mandibular second premolar, I could do a Bruxler aesthetic bridge, very translucent, from molar to my first premolar and have a three unit bridge. So I hope that clears up and answers some questions about when would I use a Bruxler, when would I use a Bruxler aesthetic? They're two different materials, both very strong, that have really different applications, not only in our lab, but in your clinical practice.